from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Program of the Year and the Best Education Show for 2017. I'm producer and host John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate level English learners. If you've already passed those beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs and get you to your goal. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds and for people of all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Native Americans. This is segment one of episode 86. In our previous episode, we featured a video entitled Ancient Ones. And that video spanned the arrival of people in America to the building of the first earth mound cities in Louisiana. One of those cities is an archaeological site known today as Poverty Point. Now, Poverty Point is a United Nations world cultural site and a national monument. Let's learn more about this in this video from Ambrose Productions. Sometime around 5,000 years ago, a group of Native American people, known today as the Poverty Point culture, lived along the lower Mississippi River and developed a unique ethnographic identity. They hunted upland game such as deer with stone-tipped spears hurled by an atlatl, a device that looked like this. They fished the adjacent rivers and lagoons. We know this from the beautiful plummets used to lure their nets. And they gathered roots from the plants growing in the nearby swamps. Then these hunter-gatherers embarked on something never done before. They figured out how to build a city. A city built according to a master blueprint. So they're choosing this spot. Again, it all comes back to food. For me, the story is, is how they sustain themselves. Uh, and in an abundance when you consider the massive earthworks. Because these folks weren't just sitting around taking it easy. You know, they're moving probably a million cubic yards of earth out here, which is a, a Corps of Engineers size project. So there has to be enough within this environment to fuel that, that kind of an economy and, and corporate, you know, work that they're doing. The scale of what these people did was staggering. The city was formed by six concentric earthen embankments that now stand six feet high and are 140 to 200 feet apart. They are separated by ditches or swales, where the earth was removed to build ridges. From end to end, the outermost terrace is 4,000 feet in length, the inner nearly 2,000 feet. The terraces are divided into six sectors by five cross-cutting aisles or corridors. In the middle is a vast central plaza Surrounding the terraces are five earthen mounds, including the giant bird mound. Centrally placed, the bird mound is over 75 feet high. From head to tail, it is 710 feet long, and from wingtip to wingtip, 640 feet. When archaeologists took aerial photos, what they saw were clearly the remains of a city built of earth. It just didn't seem possible. Throughout all of human history, advanced agriculture had always been necessary for cultures to move from nomadic to urban societies. Diana Greenlee has been studying Poverty Point. 
when archaeologists first uh, came here and started doing some excavations and they discovered how large it is and um, just how amazing it is, they initially assumed that it had to be farmers because in their experience they had not come across hunter-gatherers who could do or who did this sort of thing. And it wasn't until they actually started looking at the subsistence remains that it became clear that these were not farmers. It's just really amazing that um, a group of hunter-gatherers could construct all of this in a relatively short period of time. And it has uh, really challenged anthropologists' assumptions about hunter-gatherer uh, society and what they can accomplish. Although no burial remains of the Poverty Point people have ever been found, many trade goods from thousands of miles away have been unearthed. This was clearly a trade center of great power existing in North America long before the birth of Christ. In addition to these trade goods, many small objects of art have been found. Beads, pendants in various geometric and animal shapes, hundreds of small decorative ball objects, effigies and drawings of cats and owls, a fine collection of spear points, and most remarkably, small female figures baked from clay. Poverty Point National Monument truly is one of the great wonders of the ancient world. However, that this city is found on the delta of North America's greatest river, the Mississippi River, is not a surprise, as many of the world's early civilizations were located on river deltas. Poverty Point National Monument is situated in a large geological system called a coastal plain. A coastal plain is defined as a low relief region of largely undisturbed sedimentary strata that dip gently in the seaward direction. Such areas generally have well-developed drainage systems. The Gulf Coast Coastal Plain, which extends from the Florida Panhandle to Texas, is influenced by the Appalachian and Ozark Mountain Ranges. At the time of the Poverty Point people, this coastal plain was dominated by prairie grasses, but were in time replaced by the hard and softwood forests seen here today. A unique feature of the coastal plain is the Mississippi River embayment. It represents a break in the former continuous Appalachian mountain chain. When the supercontinent of Pangaea pulled apart 95 million years ago, it created a tectonically active rift valley. That valley is where the Mississippi River flows today. It is the most important continental drainage system in the United States. Indeed, all rivers east of the Rockies and west of the Appalachians flow into the Mississippi River. Nearing the Gulf of Mexico, the river flow slows, dropping vast amounts of sediments in a plumed shaped formation called the Delta. The Delta is characterized by shallow tributaries and swamps. It was along the banks of the Mississippi River near the Delta that the Poverty Point people chose to build their fabulous ancient city. But don't expect to see the Mississippi River near the ancient city today, as the Mississippi's channel and Delta are ever-changing.